Hey you doers, it's Boy Up Cap here, and welcome to the 200 day hardcore recap. Is it even possible to survive 200 days? Of course it is. You just need to tack on an extra 15 to 30 something hours. Woo! We achieved a lot in the first 100 days. Now the goals for this 200 days are simple. I want to set up a gunpowder farm. I want to get my hands on a max level diamond beacon. Set up a villager trading hall to get unlimited resources. And to build ourselves a farm where we can obtain unlimited emeralds. Can we do it? I don't know. Now, this video here is filled with tons of spoilers, so if you want to watch the entire series, I'll link it down in the description below. Make sure you do the thing, consider subscribing, shop Happy Chappy if you need anything, and now, let's get into Chappy's 200 Day Hardcore Recap. Starting on day 100, we were down in the mine shafts, farming diamonds. And after roughly eight days, I was bored of doing this, but I devised a very good strategy for how to acquire diamonds fast, which we showcase later in the video when we do go for the diamond beacon. On day 108, when I got back to the surface, I started to transform the area. I was acquiring a good bit of resources and needed a worthy place to store them. It was getting dangerous, hoarding my items out in the open. So I needed to get a small storage room going. And once I finished, I set up a small furnace array and checked on my villagers from the breeder. <laughs> There's a few of them in there. I then spent that night looking for some cats and fishing for some cat food. Do you have cats for sale? I had recently obtained Elytra in the previous 100 days and needed to build a gunpowder farm to keep up with my ever abusive firework spamming. So the next day I spent gathering resources for the farm, which required cats. Here, kitty, kitty, kitty. This is my friend. My friend, fish. So I built a classic fish farm in order to get easy fish. And this is a lot easier standing over there by the lake. The farm I was building required hundreds, hundreds of trapdoors. So on the night of 109, I cut down a mega, mega spruce tree. And on day 110, I made all the trapdoors I could, but it wasn't enough. From one mega spruce tree. But believe it or not, I think I'm going to need more. So I made a mega, mega, mega spruce tree. <laughs> Damn, Look at that. <laughs> there, <laughs> we don't even got room for them. I then spent the rest of the day gathering all the resources I needed and started to build the Tower of Suffering. Here, kitty, 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 get in place. Perfect. That's three layers done so far. Now what I'm going to do before we set up the roof, get chest with some hoppers. I need more glass. Okay. Built a small AFK platform up in the sky, and we were already collecting gunpowder. I spent the rest of the day gathering some resources to purposely turn the creeper tower into an XP farm. Run! Run! I didn't mean to, I'm sorry. Put half of that together. This is, yeah, this is the concept. And on day 117, I went on a major caving torching spree. This lasted all day 117 and all night of 117. More that way. Hi, bud. Clearly, I missed a section right here if you're just standing around. The next day, on day 18, I returned to the surface, had the itches for riches, so I gathered up some resources, sorted out my inventory, proceeded down to the mine shafts. Okay, here we go. Back down in the initial mine shaft. Which I then set myself up a beacon, activated the beacon with haste too, and proceeded to mine. Now this episode was sort of a bit of a tutorial and I acquired a lot of diamonds very fast, very, very fast. I then spent the next 10 days, 10 days mining diamonds, doers. <laughs>
And on the night of 128, I went back to the surface, back to the cabin. Hello, cabin. And on day 129, we checked the score. I'm seriously obsessed with doing this. Okay, that's one full stack of diamonds right there. There we go. There we go. I then proceeded to pick all of these with my Fortune 3 pickaxe. This took a whole day. I cannot be messed with while doing this. Okay, not bad. And after all that, we had it. We finally had our diamond beacon doers. With two to spare, with two to spare. And there we go, doers. That's it. Our diamond beacon, ready to go. After we set up the beacon, we had a little bit of an issue to take care of. While messing around, I accidentally smacked one of the villagers in here. And well, look at them. They're all talking. They're useless to me now. And we even had another problem too. While mining for diamonds, I accidentally broke one of my picks, so we went back to the nether, collected some nether items, and went ripping for some ancient debris. Ooh, there's two and three. Once we had enough ancient debris, we collected some more magma blocks. More. For an upcoming mega farm. Okay, hold on. We got stuff to do. And headed back to the overworld in order to make this new pickaxe. Okay, and we are back with a silk touch mending netherite pickaxe. I then spent two days, two whole days, trading and upgrading in order to name my pickaxe. Now I know what I'm on silk touch. What? <laughs> oh my goodness. Now that night was spent collecting more fish in order to get more kitty cats in order to upgrade the creeper farm so that we could have more fireworks. I spent the next day upgrading the iron farm there, and yeah, it is a killing machine now. Day 34 was spent building a contraption in order to get rid of all of these villagers that I had smacked and were gossiping and were pretty much useless to me. Yep, okay, I'm liking this so far. Oh, the goal was to move the breeder, the trading hall, and the curing station into a completely separate building. I can't help you, sir. So I tore down the villager breeder, this guy was clearly not happy about it. Yeah, this guy is eyeballing me up and down hard. We then spent the rest of day 135 starting to build the trading hall. This was going to be complete with a breeder, a zombie making station, and some other things to come in the future. That night, we put the villagers in place, and the next day, we completed the entire farm. Okay, we've got the core for the crop farm here and the breeder done. I then spent the next three days, 137, 138, 139, building the first layer of the little community hall trading center here. Okay, we're just pausing here for a minute because so far, this, this is the little community hall. Look at it. I spent all of day 140 talking about the trading hall, the zombie curing station converter thingy, and gathered up the rest of the resources that I needed in order to finish this build. I then spent the next seven days finishing this build. It's a brand new trading hall design. Woo! And during the building of this, oh um, we have stacked up, yeah, a good number of villagers. I then spent two days upgrading and decorating the community hall. We needed this to look a little bit nicer than just, um, yeah, dirt floors. 
on day 151, I decided to put a hold on turning and curing villagers since I didn't have anything to trade them anyways, and I immediately started to gather some resources for the next build that I had planned, only to realize I didn't have one very important item. Okay, we need to find a desert. So that night, we gathered our elytra, and we set off on a journey. I needed to find a desert. I like it. Oh, and there it is, a desert. This took way too long to find. So I gathered my cacti and went on my way. While searching about, I discovered one of the smallest villages I have ever seen and a rare two well desert. And after fending off a witch, I found one of the most rare items in Minecraft, oh doers. My goodness. Oh my goodness. I literally didn't even think those things, I didn't. So I headed home, stashed the gapple safely, and reset my inventory, and went out on one last mission. And this time, it's for some ice. We need some ice. So I spent the next two days looking for an ice biome. No pandas, though. Success! So I took our ice home, and finally, we were ready. So I set up the first pod, and hustled to get the other five in place. Now this was an iron farm, so I had to get a bunch of villagers in place, so I spent the entire night of 160 and day 161 trying to get more villagers into their holes. And then that night, I started to get all of the zombies in place for the farm, and we were finally almost done. But I needed one important thing. I needed to set up a permaloader. End up. Let's see. No! Wow! 12 Minecraft days this took, doers. And it's my little secret this weapon. Right here. Wait for it. Wait for it. Took way too long. On day 174, once complete, I went back to the overworld and spent the entire day building the collection system for the iron and finishing off the permaloader. <laughs> and on the morning of day 75, it happened, doers. I'm here. Huh? Uh oh. Uh oh. Okay, this is not good. We're gonna have to spawn proof some area here! Oh, I'm out of here! I'm leaving right now. I'm leaving. I'm not even healing. I'm joking. I'm gonna heal. But I'm out of here. Oh my god! You deserve it. So I went back to the surface, spent the day touching up the iron farm, activated it by giving the zombies sight of the villagers. Everything looked like it was working. So after some time, I decided to go back to the nether to make sure that the iron golems were showing up. Um, you can see we've got iron golems stacking up. Okay, this farm is good. This farm is fantastic. Oh my god, I'm just running around on a half heart right now. Hold on. So I set up the killing chamber. Okay, that's not a there we go moment. And by day 176, we had another iron farm going. You can actually see the iron come through too. Watch. Wait for it. There it is. Look at that. Seven was spent adding another layer onto the creeper farm. And after stacking the creeper farm, I started to prepare myself for creating what I call the Emerald Generator. This system alone requires four stacks of hoppers. Day 179, I did something with the dragon egg to see if it would light up. So I checked my resources and began building the Emerald Generator. I have no idea why I proceeded to fly off into the distance there. I'm literally building it right there behind me. 
This isn't so much a mega build or a super farm, but it does incorporate eight to 10 different crop farms all into one. Look at it, doers. Carrots, potatoes, beetroot, melon, pumpkins, and some sweet berries too as well. You can get it all from this. Now we needed one important thing for this build. We needed some foxes. So we gathered our leads and went on a mission. And it wasn't long after setting out before we did manage to find our fox, but... Hey, hey, that, it, it... You're out. So we pressed on. And after spotting one, playing some tag, almost getting blown up, that's fine. Playing some more tag, finally, we had our two foxes. It took the entire night and half the day of 187 to get them home, but we did it. I know, you guys can smell it. We bred up some extras for the other side. Okay. Check the progress of the farm. And nearly died to a sweet berry bush. Uh, Day 188 was spent building the path. Hmm? What is this? What was that? What was that? Hmm? Hmm? What? What is it? Why are they standing around? What is that pod placement? So we spent day 190 gathering resources. Made myself an Enderman friend for life. Spent the next day gathering some ice and running for my life too as well. And after getting everything we need, we headed for the stronghold. We visited Whole Horse, who has been literally stuck in this hole since, like, nice. I then spent the next two days wondering why I even bother making tutorials. Oh my goodness, thank God water was there. And on day 193, we were back. After touching up the path, I emptied out a few shulker boxes and somehow managed to acquire one of the rarest items in Minecraft, the golden bamboo. Woo! That one got a little sketchy. Day 194, I almost killed myself again, so I checked on all my farms. Chest, two chests. We are on to the third chest of iron. Gathered all the gold, which happened to be enough for four more gapples. So I moved the rail system back and started the process of making and curing zombie villagers. Okay, there's one so far. Day 95 was all technical difficulties. What in tarnations is going on right now? And it works. But after getting four zombies ready for curing, I brewed all the potions needed. But I still needed one thing. Apples. That night I found one. Woo! Oh my god, I am going home. I am out of here. I am out of here. I don't even care that I got no fireworks left. I'm just gonna fly up high. And since I didn't have a farmer ready, I just cut half of the world down. And I got my apple. While waiting for the no, cure, no, no, I realized I had an iron problem. We already have an iron problem. These chests were quickly filling up, so I turned all of the iron I could into iron blocks just to give the farm a little bit more time before I kind of upgraded it. We put a door on each wing to protect the villagers and make it easier for me to get in and out. On day 198, I gave everyone some anxiety and shuffled more villagers in place. I gave each one their trade. And after almost burning to death on day 199, I cured four more zombies, leveled up all my villagers, and that night, shuffled the rest into place. Day 200 and on was spent building an ice road to connect the emerald generator to the community hall. Look at how fast I can bunny hop, you guys. Wowzers! And then I spent the next two days 
connecting everything up, and here we are leveling up the villagers and trading as many emeralds as we could we're currently on day 204 and pressing on thank you so much for watching consider subscribing shop happy chappy for any merchant world downloads i love every single one of you and i'll see you on the next one peace